Hello, everybody. Hello, Bobby. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. I'm going to share my screen. I think we're expecting at least one more person. I don't know if this is going to be it. I hope not. Um, let me get this up here. Up oh, there he is. Good morning. Hello, Alfonso. How are you? Very fine. And you? I am well. I am well. It's Monday morning. Uh, kind of a holiday here. Um, so it's it's a slow day for us. Good. It's early in the morning for me, but here I am. Yes, thank you for joining us. Um, on the call right now is Arunima, who is my mentee, who is going to be, again, in charge of coordinating all of um, basically one of the main things that we're doing um, as the documentation task force is supporting all the mentorship programs. And for Good. those of you on the call, Alfonso has um, one of the mentorship programs, the learning tokens. So he is going to tell us a little bit about that um, so we can see how we can assist and also possibly be a test case for him um, through what some of the things that we're trying to do. Um, oh. But for that would that be great. <laughs> First, I just want to just mention that the antitrust policy is on the screen. Um, it is how we conduct the meetings, and there's a code of conduct if you need to read about how to um, behave on the calls. Um, so we'll get into it in just a minute. People are still filtering in. Um, so Alfonso, how is your mentorship going? How is your mentee? Tell us a little bit about just the overall. Well, this is the uh, second year of, of learning tokens uh, and my third year as a, as a Linux Foundation mentor. Um, the first year, you remember Bobby as part of the learning and materials and, and development special interest group, we had the global directory and that went quite well. And we got related with uh, GBBC, which is the Global Blockchain Business Council. And they were doing a mapping initiative in which we collaborated and that end up with a crowdsource list of about 800 uh, places in the world where you can learn about blockchain and DLT. Uh, the learning tokens basically is a, an idea that complements an, an old, very good uh, approach of certifying uh, degrees and, and courses in, with block certs in, in the blockchain. Why is it a complement? Because we go before the final certification of the course. Uh, we go in a granular way to register the transmission of skills. Learning tokens is a way to register transmission of skills between whomever is teaching the skill and whomever is learning the, the skill. Uh, the idea is that these tokens can be given automatically for three purposes. <clears throat> One, the teacher can assign tokens for each of the steps where she or he evaluates the acquisition of a, split of a skill. A second one is a token that is given among the learners. So that if someone helps someone else in the process of, of learning a skill, then he receives a token or she receives a token. And the third kind of token is a token that students receive, learners receive to grade the instructor. So it's a way of registering within a community the transmission and acquisition of, of skills. Um, as a result, learners 
have a, an e-wallet that it's a profile of skills, an e-wallet that they can use uh, with all the, the, um, the uh, privacy issues that, that we can have with verifiable credentials and, and all those, those issues to show the skills that acquire during, during a lifetime. This is important not for, for the person, but it's important for um, whomever is going to hire them or whomever is going to partner with them and for the institutions to, to measure in a granular way, to have data of the learning process. Block search is, and batches are very good for the completion of the process. Learning tokens, it's granular registry of the process. Uh, last year, we uh, used the token taxonomy framework of the Interwork Alliance, which is hosted by Global Blockchain Business uh, Council to define what the previous mentee defined a the artifacts for, for those three tokens. This year, what we're going to do is we're going to work in three phases. First phase and a very quick one, we are going to write and deploy in Hyperledger Besu these smart contracts that correspond to the artifacts defined last year. Second, we're going to look into the structure of massive online open courses, MOOCs, to find an easy way for the instructors that create those courses to give tokens automatically. And the third phase, that's what I said, oh, when, when you suggested it, Bobby, is we are going to have a, a pilot project, okay? The pilot project would, could be with, within Hyperledger, that's why I appreciate what, what you suggest. But also could be <clears throat> locally. Um, the mentee of this year is from Bangladesh. We have 32 applications. Um, I interviewed 17. All of them were outstandingly uh, qualified. And uh, the good thing is we have a Hyperledger lab for learning tokens where we can uh, receive all those interested that were not uh, unfortunately selected as, as one mentee. But the, the pilot project could be from a local uh, university, or we can reach because Hyperledger now has, has a formal agreement with GBDC for this mentorship project to announce in the 800 universities that uh, GBBC has in the global standards mapping initiative. So that's, that's uh, what it is. And um, we are beginning tomorrow is our first uh, working day with Tanjin. First mentee was from India. Second mentee was from El Salvador in Central America. And third mentee is from Bangladesh. So it seems like you know we cross the Pacific every year. So maybe next year would be back in Latin America. And that's what it is. And I'm open to questions. Well, first, Alfonso, thank you so much for coming and presenting this. Uh, I feel that the synergies between what we're going to be doing um, towards the end, one of our buckets of work, and I can explain quickly our buckets, but one of our buckets are user guides for things. And we would love to supply user guides for people who are um, actively looking into learning tokens through the library. I mean, we're gonna be working on, if you go to the wiki and hit that button or go to the website and hit the button libraries, um, there's gonna be uh, learning materials in there. And it would be great if they could earn the learning tokens taking little videos or whatever. Like you said, it's very granular. So as they, you know, do something, they get a token in their wallet and they learn about that first. And that would be awesome if we could somehow create that user guide through the Hyperledger library, which is something that when we do user guides, we will definitely um, work together to get that done, uh, whatever you need. Um, 
That, We're that here would for you. Incredible. That, that would be incredible. I thank you uh, for the suggestion. I thank you for the support. No, and um, just yes. another quick question from from me before I turn it over to people. So, how are you using Basu? Like, where? So you have the learning tokens lab. So if I wanted to try to do this for, say, a course, um, like I just finished writing the Hyperledger, Intro to Hyperledger MOOC for edX, and and it's not my course, it's their course. So I wrote it for them, so I can't do it to that. But for instance, for my example, let's take that course. So it's a brand new course. It's not even out yet. It's coming out in two days. So if I were to um, enact learning tokens for that course, um, what would be the steps? Like, would I fork your lab and then customize the artifact? Like, how does the process work for someone to grab the information and and use it as a test case. Okay, the way to do it is one of the main issues with block certs and with uh, certifications in the blockchain is not only the issue of the blockchain registry, which that is quite well solved, but it's the issue of the institutions, the all the administrative registry of institutions for the courses given for the instructors, for the, the, the learners. Um, that is private information that universities, um, edX or whomever wants to keep in, in a private way so that they can have a central registry or decentralize whatever they want to do, but that's a private part. And on the other hand, the wallets and the tokens, we want them to be in a public, uh, way. So what we are going to do at the end of this mentorship is we'll have these smart contracts in BESU for the minting, the transmission, the wallets of the tokens themselves. And we will give a general idea of how an institution that wants to use it, in this case, yourself at edX, you know, register within their administrative processes. We're not touching upon those, but they would have a way of connecting with the minting and distribution of tokens. And you would have in your course, and this is the most important point, you could have in your course if you want to, a way to automatically give the tokens on each assignment, on each assessment, or on each step, whatever you want to define. You define the granularity and you define how many tokens you give, okay, for the students. We are suggesting, just as a suggestion, that there would be a hundred tokens per student like in most of the grades in different parts of the world that go on, on the decimal system. So the tokens would be there deployed as smart contracts and an outline from the second phase of, of our project would be for the institutions to decide how to include the assignment and, and distribution of tokens as, as they fit seem, being fit. So you would kind of need the user guides for project managers on the university level to tell them how to register the events, the course being the event and the uh, wallet they get before they start learning with a hundred tokens in it to get classes. First, and first then- Yep, and then as they mature in the system, they're earning more tokens for more classes or more incentives, uh, game-based ideas. Awesome. What a great yes. concept, Alfonso. The, you the, guys idea, no. the idea is to, to let every institution continue working the way they do. Okay, we're just adding something. And we're adding a token and a wallet and a way to assign those tokens as you wish. I call it tokenomics. 
It is, it is. And also um, we are linking with the skill-based learning approach, which is this a new, um, a well, it has been around for, for a while, but it's been uh, promoted recently by the, the, uh, the, the World Economic Forum. And they have a taxonomy of skills. So the idea is to use the taxonomy of skills so that everyone knows what kind of token they're getting, why they get it, from what course, from what instructor, from what institution. Yeah. But giving freedom to everyone to continue working the way they do. They don't mm -hmm. have to go to a special registry. We just provide a support and the support from Hyperledger, you know, and also, it's it's a joint effort with the GBDC. Okay, and and, and, and you're using Basu so that it's public and private. That's awesome too. That's the idea. The idea is if they want to use the private part and and do some of the registry they want to, fine. If if they don't, they just register saying we are taking tokens for this course mm -hmm. given by. Bobby, well, created by Bobby, no, and given by Edix. Mm -hmm. That's incredible. It is really quite incredible. Future of learning. Um, so I'm going to open it up to everybody on the call. Please ask Alfonso as many questions as it popped into your head. And I'll try to answer as many as I push to pop out of my head. So I'm not going to call on you. So there you go, Malcolm's first. Hey, good morning. Uh, yeah, the gr great presentation. Um, I, I did come in a little late, so hopefully I'm not um, asking something repetitive, but I was wondering, um, I see that uh, this is really for MOOCs, the, the open open courses. Um, is there also a plan to do this like in a, like let's say a college, maybe like you, you go to the college and it, you know, you get different tokens for each class or each year and you can transfer that token to another college. Um, is that also in the plan for this project? Um, not for the project as such. You're talking about an application and that would be a very interesting application to complement a skill-based registry of learning to the university or college registry of degrees and certificates, okay? Um, we're not gonna do the marketing. Okay, as such of application, we're a basic tool. We provide a tool for whomever wants to use it. Okay, and that then that is why it's very important what Bobby suggested at, at the beginning that we can do together a in the library a guide on how to use this token. But what you're saying would be a, a, a very good application. Complementary to what they already do. Yeah, and to add on that, I would love to try to just use a test case of Ledger Academy and see if Ledger Academy can, as soon as a student registers, give them 100 tokens and see what classes they can come in the metaverse and take. That would be awesome. <laughs> so you've got me even thinking of it on my own personal professional level now. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm glad you, you want to join. The, uh, absolutely. The, I think this end, is... the, the, the tokens would be at the end, okay, of this mentorship, you know, with your support for the guide. The guide yes. Guides. But uh, yes, it's, it's, it, it's, awesome. it's, for, it's for you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, thank you, Malcolm. Do you have any more questions, Malcolm? Uh, no, that was it. I appreciate it. Thank you. Does anybody else have any questions? Okay, I'm not seeing anybody raise their hand or to go off mute. So Alfonso, thank you for joining us. Um, and I might be sending people to your calls. Do you have them set up at a time yet um, for your mentor? Um, yes, I, I will have them Tuesday morning because we are 12 hours apart. Okay, but it would be private all the time. And then every two weeks, we're going to open up and have a and open up mentor, mentee, plus whomever wants to come. So it's and then Tuesday, 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 yes. 
Tuesdays um, at 10 o'clock a.m. Mexico's time, which is mountain time in the U.S. now. Okay. Perfect. Well, again, thank you so much for joining us. No, thanks to you for the You're invitation. welcome to stay for our meeting. Um, well, hold on. I, I, as I told you, I apologize. I have another meeting, no, a previous meeting. So I'm going back to that. <laughs> okay. Okay. Thank you so much. Thanks to you. Bye-bye. Okay. Bye-bye. Thank you. Okay, so let's get back to our meeting and welcome everyone. Um, I hope you enjoyed that. He only had a little bit of time for us. Um, so I didn't realize um, I had worked with him three years ago on the registry um, to register blockchain institutions that were um, legit, let's say, instead of like some of the ones that were fly by night. Like I could tell you some stories. I'll tell you this one story. About five years ago, I was at the Miami Blockchain Convention, and uh, I was there for Ledger Academy. I was just starting, or six years ago, I think it was, starting out, and it was when uh, Bitcoin was at its highest. And so this was the convention in Miami, and Vitalik Buterin was there, and two years before that was when he had announced Ethereum at that very convention, and he was walking around like a big man on campus. It was great to see, even though he was like... 20 at the time. Um, but there was this company there that I wanted to um, either join, work with, um, learn from, and they were called uh, Academy um, of Blockchain. And they were an international company and they were raising money. And the, the gentleman's name was Jason King, who was running this Academy token uh, thing. And they raised so much money at that convention. Like, I don't know how to raise money, but they had all their, their uh, investors there. They had all their angel investors, their, their you know, whatever. Um, and they raised over, like, I don't even know how many millions of dollars they raised. I can't find them online anymore. I don't think they ever taught a class. <laughs> so I, again, I was shocked and appalled that, that they could, say that they were going to do something, actually raise money and then just not do it at all. Um, when even someone like myself, who's just a regular teach, computer teacher, technology teacher, uh, could muster up a class or two once every quarter. You know, like they couldn't even do that and I could, like, and they had millions of dollars behind them. So like the motivation for a lot of people, and that was six years ago, a lot of those types of companies have been weeding out. I could tell you at least 10 10 different stories from that convention of companies that looked like they had the best plan and now are completely gone with their ICOs and their, it, it was just an incredible time. What, 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 what a, I'm going to curse. What a shit show. Anyway, <laughs> I apologize for the curse word, um, but it's the most appropriate one. So we're going to go back to um, our meeting. So again, that was what the first year of that project was to try to weed out people who were actually not doing what they um, said that they were going to do um, and actually teaching courses. And again, the, the um, GBBC, which we, he's uh, partnered with is an excellent resource for um, learning uh, blockchain. So housekeeping again, this is our weekly meeting. Welcome everybody. Um, we're gonna go through the, um, roll call in a minute and talk about what everybody's been working on, but just to give you an overview of what we're doing today, it's kind of a light meeting because of the presentation. Um, first and foremost, welcome and housekeeping. I want to say thank you for everybody who was on the TOC meeting on Thursday and presented. You guys did an excellent job. They were very impressed. Um, Min was so appreciative and I'm hoping that um, a lot of connections were made um, so that we can work together with some of these mentorships. Um, I will get involved in the summer if we need to connect with any specific ones, just like the learning token. Um, and if anybody has gone through the list of mentorship programs and think that there's synergies like with the learning token, please raise your hand, invite them to present, do whatever. These are your meetings. Um, I'm just here to make sure they happen. Um, so that is, um, thank you again for everybody. Runeman, you did an excellent job organizing that, setting it up. I was very, very impressed. Um, so we had the presentation of the learning tokens. We're going to go through the um, roll call and talk. Um, 
just wanted you to keep in mind when we go through everybody, what we're working on in the next two to three weeks um, is the presentation for the TOC about the task force. And through that presentation, we will organize our committees and our thoughts and our goals. Um, so that by the time we do this presentation, um, we will know what we're working on in the summer because we will tell the technical oversight committee, this is what we're working on this summer. And in order to do that, we have to organize ourselves in the next two weeks. So um, that's the that's what we're working on is that presentation. Um, it is the point of the presentation is to tell the TOC that we're not going to be presenting or I'm not going to be talking about the task force every week for the summer. We're just going to be working and we'll let them know if we need time um, during their calls. Um, and we want to tell them specifically what we're working on. And again, it's those five, five sections. Um, and we want to, you know, specify the goals that we want to achieve by the end of the summer um, in that presentation. So we're going to break out into subsections for those five. Um, and we're going to pick um, head or, you know, anyone who wants, if no one does it, Arunaman gets the job. Um, Arunima gets the job. Unfortunately, she's going to get most of the jobs that no one picks up. <laughs> That's uh, not a problem. I'm really enjoying this and, you know, learning so much. And I actually made some amazing friends also through this call. So it's, it's awesome. Oh, good. I'm so glad you're getting a good experience. I hope everybody by the end of the summer thinks this was a great way to uh, expand your horizons. Um, so we'll be selecting the subcommittee chair. So if you're introducing yourself and you see yourself in one of the roles, I'll go over the five topics again briefly um, before we start introducing everybody. And then I'm going to leave the call and leave the room open for you to, if you have subcommittees you want to talk about, um, if you need time on Zoom calls during the week, just let me know. I can give you my personal Zoom room or we can grab one from the um, Hyperledger folks. Um, so again, the, the five things we're working on are the GitHub repository, and I know someone has been working with Tracy on that, um, the templates for the community, um, best practices, which after the TOC meeting is going to morph into best practices slash badging. They want to offer badges, kind of, I guess, like the learning token idea uh, for when uh, Projects have everything they need in their labs to move to incubation, have everything in their incubation to move to graduated, and then maintain their graduated uh, version controls, user guides, and security measures throughout the lifespan of the project. Um, so that badging thing is just getting started. So that's that's a, like best practices. Um, they want to put the best practices task force into a badging thing. Onboarding, we're going to be working heavily with a lot of the um, website and wiki page and other places that the community onboards, but we'll be working with that mentee on that more so than just working on our own. Um, but we will be supplying the onboarding guides and um, direction. And then the user guides, again, there is going to be so many of those, and this is going to um. probably Bobby, sorry to inter interrupt, but, uh, you know, Akanksha, uh, she wanted to ask for a long time about um, what's, so Akanksha, you can uh, go ahead and ask. Sorry, about... uh, Bobby, sorry for interrupting you. In oh, no, no, no worries. Please interrupt me at all, whenever you <laughs> have an idea. Yeah, I was just waiting, like, you finished, then I'll uh, start talking about it. So, actually, I have been selected as the onboarding mentee for this year's LFX program. Uh, so, so under Ben Sir and Nikki Sir, uh, I've been selected as uh, a mentee and I'm working under them, but also I'm working under you as a, a person who is leading the onboarding, uh, onboarding task force for documentation also. So the Thank thing you is, so I, much. Yeah, I had asked you earlier to, to like if we can work on both, you said yeah, it won't be of much of an issue because usually documentation and uh, uh, and onboarding are side by side. They are um, like yeah, really and and definitely you can feed this group whatever onboarding needs from us. Definitely, ma'am. So for the problem is that I have been not in much contact with John sir. Uh, I have contacted the other mentor. Peter sir is also like not responsive enough because I guess he's busy and he, uh, he's leading a lot of projects. But uh, I have contacted 
both the mentors and like i'm not able to contact ben sir uh, uh, john sir sorry the other mentor has like responded to me but he said like will be starting soon and in today's meet also they are on, not there so i'm not really clear about what exactly how should i start on boarding work so can you just give me gu or guide me like what should i Sure, of course. Okay, so I know John is on vacation, or he mentioned in a meeting two weeks ago that he had family commitments at the start of the mentorship program and would not be around for this call for two weeks. And this is the second week. So I do apologize for the timing of the mentorship program and his vacation. Um, but I know that he will be back on this call next week to completely guide you. Um, just to take a, a, a thousand foot view, um, where am I going? Uh, no. Yes. So each um, each mentorship group has a page for men. So on mine, I keep what we do for Arunima um, and what her tasks are on this page. And I'm sure there's one for onboarding. And that's where John and uh, the other mentor will communicate with you as to what the tasks are for the onboarding task force, which again has its own um, information and page. Um, so I hope that answers your questions about to where he's been and the guidance that hasn't been coming, but will be. Um, did that cover it? I guess it did or didn't. I'm not sure if that helped answer your question. Uh, yeah, I checked this page also. And also, like, I have uh, checked uh, two more pages, one which was created by you. I guess you have created that in which you have mentioned the task of onboarding. Like yes, I, let me see if that. I can find it. Uh... Yeah, I have, like, read it. And in the meeting, too, like, the TOC meeting on Thursday last I speak, spoke about that, everything you wrote there, and I just explained that in brief. From there, I got the reference. So thank you for making that work. Yep. Yeah, so this is the onboarding stuff. And again, it hasn't had a formal meeting in a long time. Um, and I was the task force for the um, liaison for this task force to the TOC, but John was kind of running it, and he put the mentorship project up. So... Um, Again, I'm sure that we're we're still waiting a lot on onboarding, and I apologize for the the lack of information or continuity. But it's so hard to do anything with onboarding until we get the new branding um, and the new look and feel and the new website, because you can't really design around something you don't know what it looks like. Yet. <laughs> yeah, I understand that, but like I'm just you know clear. I have got an idea since I've talked to you that yeah, I will be working on everything properly. Once John's uh, service back, so that's all I want. And, and I think the first thing that John will do, or if he's, I'll, I'll send him an email this week to make sure he'll be on next week, is we need to get Ben involved. We need to have his cooperation as to, you know, enacting the things that you're suggesting or, you know, putting them on the website and working with him. Um, so we really need to get him involved in these calls. Um, so I will put that down as an action item for me. Yes. Thomas. Thank you so much, ma'am. I'm I'm a bit clear now. Um, I'm sorry, I didn't I didn't hear that. I said, ma'am, thank you so much. I am a bit clear now. Okay. Okay, so now I'm going to go back, and we're going to start introductions. And again, keep in mind the five committees. If you want to work on one, two, three, four, five, doesn't matter. Just as long as if you commit to something, you do do it. Um, so let's start with Come on, computer. Ugh. I apologize for my computer. Okay, so I've already introduced myself and gone first. So we'll go down the list and Agnes is on my list first. 
<clears throat> All right, hi everyone. Um, I think I'd be interested in joining the user guides and best practices committees. Yeah, I think that would be something I'd be interested in. Um, yeah, as for the other projects, I'll be joining. Uh, last week, I and someone else joined the Indie and Aries calls. So I've just been reading through their wikis, just to understand what they're all about. So I'll join the other calls this week. Uh, someone mentioned, one of the leads mentioned that we probably need to have a meeting so that we know exactly what to do in, with regard to documentation. So I'll probably have an update on the next meeting. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, next is Ankasha. Ankasha. Uh, hello, ma'am. So yeah, yeah you could just I was, yeah. introduce yourself to everybody as like overall. Okay. <laughs> okay. So hi everyone. So I am a Kangsha Rani, and I'm from India, New Delhi, and I've been working uh, and contributing to Hyperledger since past. I guess it's more than a month because I was there before filling the application, and uh, I've been uh, in talk with John, ma uh, John sir, and Bobby, ma'am, since then. So it's been a long time that I'm part of this community round. So that's why I am so uh, like inter interested in working with ma'am that I'm working two projects right now. One is onboarding for which I'm actually a selected mentee and one is documentation under Bobby ma'am. So onboarding is the project that I would li like to lead on because it would be convenient for me as well. So that's about me and I would love to work with you all. Thank you ma'am. Thank you so much. Aruna ma'am. Yeah, so hello everyone. My name is Anima Chaudhary and I will be, I am also one of the LFX mentees selected and I will be leading the documentation standards task force and helping you all. And I hope at the end we all can make this project a success and help the other projects as well to uh, provide, uh, pro to help them bridge the gaps in documentation and as much as we can. So yeah, that's about me. And I'm also from India. So, yes. Thank you so much. And again, you did a great job on the presentation. They were really impressed. They got a, a, fl a, a flavor for what we're doing and it was short to the point. So thank you so much for arranging all that. Thank you so much, Bobby. Thanks a lot. And everybody else on the call who, who stepped up and presented, it was awesome. Um, Kajal? I'm from India, uh, Jalandhar. Like my college is in Jalandhar, and I'm from UP. So I would be work working on a GitHub template and uh, best practices. And like I have uh, already uh, talked to the Bevel mentee. Bobby, you had said that he'll be joining our meet. So. Oh, I'm sorry, did you join any any calls? I guess he didn't get to meet him. Oh, okay. So you're interested in um, these three um, areas? Yes, yes. And, and about the projects, I have talked to the Bevel one. And also I have texted in a Cacti uh, project group but I have not received any reply from there. So- Which one? Uh, Cacti. I'm sorry. State. I may be pronouncing it correct. Yeah, just type it in the chat for me. Cacti. Um, Cacti. Oh, Cacti. <laughs> Cacti. <laughs> I'll tell you the story about that. <laughs> so Cacti um, yes, was they ha they haven't replied yet. Like I didn't get any response from them. So I would be okay. joining their next meeting. Yeah, Peter is awesome. And if you introduce yourself to Peter, he's in charge of Cacti. He will help you out and, and get you where you everything you need. He is really, really a good guy. Um, but Cactus was born out of it was the um, bath 
uh, blockchain, no, automation framework. No, I think it was BIF, the inner, oh, so it was the interactive framework. So it was dealing with interoperability and how Hyperledger saw the definite need that we need to be able to have some kind of area blockchains can go to talk to each other. So it was like a playground where all the other blockchains can go and play. Um, and so that was a lab for like two years. And then at the global forum in Arizona, uh, the lab presented um, and became a project called Cactus because we were in Arizona and there were cactuses. And then they realized about a year later, which was like just a few months ago, that Cactus is plural and the project is singular. So they've changed the name from Cactus to Cacti, oh. which I personally think a project that is about interoperability should have nothing to do with cactuses because cactuses take yes. stay away. <laughs> I never agreed with the name on that. <laughs> anyway, um, so thank you very much. And um, when we break out into the, um, when Arunima has the uh, breakouts to start the presentation work, um, That'll be great to keep that in mind that you've done those things. Um, the presentation, we're not on the agenda yet, so there's no panicking about getting it done. Um, next week, I will tell them when we're gonna present, um, or this week, and it won't be for at least two to three weeks. So we have plenty of time to work on getting our thoughts straight so we know what each group's goals are, and we have plenty of time to make the presentation awesome. So no worries about that. Um, and thank you so much. Okay, Malcolm. Hey, yes, good morning, everybody. Um, I'm Malcolm. I am uh, currently a, a programmer for uh, data governance for an insurance company. Um, I'm interested in the application of blockchain technology for enterprise use. Um, I just finished the intro to Hyperledger course this morning. Um, so ready to, to jump into uh, more learning. Um, one thing I noticed was uh, the, the mention of the special interest groups uh, in the last section. Uh, thought that was pretty interesting. Um, and I'm looking at uh, not only this group for documentation, which I think will definitely help uh, with my own skills. And, and I love to help other people, uh, you know, be able to, to get started and using the technology. <clears throat> but um, I'll be joining a bunch of calls this week. Um, I think the learning token uh, with BASU is interesting as well. I mean, I would love to see like a, a way for where you can get a token in a MOOC or in a university and then transfer it to like, let's say you get a token from a university and it's you can use it in an online course or vice versa. I think that would be pretty cool. Mm -hmm. um, but it, it, uh, as far as the, you know, the group, I definitely want to um, help with user guides. I think Agnes also mentioned um, but that, that's where I think uh, I think I will fit in pretty pretty well is with the, the user guide help. Awesome, thank you. Yeah, the special interest groups are, are uh, to me the purpose of Hyperledger because you have all these consortium based groups not worried about proprietary software for the first time um, because open source other open source projects still come with the stigma of. I'm going to say mine, 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 uh, <laughs> where uh, Hyperledger is uh, trying to be the open source project that's yours, 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 yours. Um, and hopefully, um, you know, that will, with the special interest groups, create solutions like we've never seen before, like with Telcom, that one white paper that they wrote that has to do with how they um, settle the calls at night because you bounce off all the towers and every night they have to settle. And now they just do it on a blockchain um, on Hyperledger. And it, it's amazing um, how quickly mm -hmm. they can work together. So again, the special interest groups, the climate action, the trade finance, um, they're all doing, I, I guess it's capital, um, capital markets. Um, again, just amazing things. They just put out a paper. I'm not sure if I can grab it right away, but I'll put the link in the chat if I can. I think I put it on my desktop. They just came out with a paper 
on CBDCs Hyperledger. It was a, oh no, I put it, I know where it is. Hold on, let me just get it in the chat. Uh, this is well worth reading. Um, Which group did you say this was the? Uh, this is the trade capital, uh, market. capital markets. So this is on, um, it, it just gives you an overview. Oh, I found it. Yay. It gives you an overview of um, the current status of every CBCD in the, on the globe. So let me just drop that in the link for people to read. And it nice. just came out. Copy, chat. You know, this link works for everybody. Have you had any? Have you had any? Oh, uh, that might not work. That's my own user guide. Oh crap! Um, oh, I know what to do. Hold on. Sorry, you're seeing the inside of my uh, machine. Okay, so the the um, special interest group Capital Markets put out this for the Hyperledger community. Um, it's very interesting. I just put it up there the easiest way to, for you guys to uh, get at it. So enjoy reading that. And definitely um, the special interest groups, every single one of them. Um, I'm sorry, social impact. Uh, went away. That was my favorite, um, but there was nobody really there to keep it up. Um, but again, some of these are um, fascinating um, places to be. Um, so back to uh, Chipor. Um, I know you have done a lot. Um, so if you could catch us up on all your awesome work, that would be great. Hi, Bobby. Hi, everyone. So, um, uh, Bobby, would you mind to go back to my wiki page that I you wanted us to create and like post everything yeah so i joined the meeting of solang before uh, and i've just attended that and uh, as bobby selected uh, suggested that we should go around and like just barge into the meetings and say that uh, she <laughs> like uh, tended us and so i did that and uh, when i was in the call they uh, uh, were like struggling with the doc documentation and the last time that i joined their meeting uh, that was last friday i joined them and uh, and i told them that if they need any help we can help them so they were like yeah we need a lot of help because because <laughs> we are all developers we don't know how to do anything about documentation and it would be amazing if you can make tutorials like for the beginners and uh, if you can help us in like user guides so um, i guess i will be under the subsections of user guide and uh, uh, so here I can, uh, you can uh, see that there are uh, the uh, tutorials that they wanted to work on, like uh, what is Solang and how we can set up in different operating systems like Mac OS, Linux, Microsoft and uh, that all. And they want us to give them a user guide on how to set up Solang. And if you don't even know about anything about coding, then we have to like, uh, it should be very beginner friendly. We have to introduce what what is Solana, what is uh, like how to make contracts and if you want to make contracts in Solidity, how can you upload it on uh, Solang? So yeah, they that's what they are looking for. And uh, so I came up with uh, all these uh, like headings for the tutorials, if we can work on any of them. And I wanted to take guidance from Bobby, how we should be proceeding and what should I convey to them? Well, here's the thing. So, so the usual or what Hyperledger wants the documentation task force in the GitHub section to do is it wants these projects to be able to take their current GitHub repositories, use either read the docs, make the docs, Sphinx, which is what we have to come up with, with, you know, what that templated GitHub repository looks like. Um, and take their current working repositories and make them user guides. That's what I always thought the user guides came from. 
So insofar as you sitting down and trying to create user guides for them, I think it's more modifying the GitHub repository into user guides. And anyone can correct me if I'm wrong. So yeah, I don't think you'll be doing these from scratch, but more assisting with taking their GitHub repository, because their GitHub repositories, in order for them to move through the life cycle, need to have certain things in them. And that's the ability to create user docs from them. Um, but this other stuff, like getting started with Solang, a beginner's guide, we can definitely, definitely do that one. Um, but again, building the projects, a comprehensive, like, the, I don't think you have the bandwidth um, to be able to create, I mean, this is a massive undertaking, all these user guides. This is massive. This is the MOOC. If you did all this, you'd create a MOOC. Um, so again, we're there to help them any way we can and whatever bandwidth you have, but I don't want you to think that that because you're on this uh, Solang user guide task force that you have to create all of these documents. It's like above yeah. and beyond what we'd ask you to do. <laughs> That's what I was like. So I was I wanted to know that what is the way to proceed and how should I get started and what should I tell them in the next meeting that what I will be uh, like providing them or what uh, the team has uh, and what we can do for them. Like. I would, um, let me see if I can find our old documentation task force page. Oh, I can't stand when I can't find stuff. Okay, I just go to search. So one of the things we did a few years ago in the learning materials working group, um, I'm going to find this, was go over what the document standards were for the um, community as it stands. And the gentleman, Ben, who was working with us, had done all of this amazing work as to what each one of the projects uses. Um, and then he get, did a little tutorial on comparing the two. So what I would suggest you play with this week is the GitHub repository for Solang and see if you can run it through. I think this one is read the docs. This one might be make the docs. And he kind of then goes into how to do these, um, how to take the um, RST, you know, how to, how to kind of take the um, GitHub repository and make it into user guides. So either with read the docs or make the docs, I guess he gives you the read the docs tutorial here. So I'll drop this link in the chat for you. And if, and if you want to see if you can take, I mean, that would be your first thing. So go to them and say, I looked at your GitHub repository. Um, there's some paid tooling that, that Hyperledger offers us. One of them is read the docs. We can make your GitHub into user guides by doing this. They probably don't know that, that they can just yeah, take yeah. their repository and make the user guides. <laughs> Actually, so, they ha have their existing one. I have also uh, like LinkedIn in my um, wiki uh, where i mentioned all the <laughs> names of the tutorials so yeah they have an existing so like they just want it to be very very user friendly like if someone who does not know even a bit of coding they should understand what we are talking about and how so can be useful if they uh, use it in their projects or anything yeah exactly okay, okay. hold on also, Tripur, that's a lot of work that you have done. So if you need yes. any help, uh, yeah, and a big clap for that. So if you need any help in, you know, doing the task or any kind of assistance, then, you know, let me know. Just ping me on LinkedIn and I will start helping you out with, with any of the tasks that you are currently taking. Okay. So don't take too much pressure. Yeah. Just <laughs> Yeah. Thanks. 
Yes, that was a lot of work. Thank you. So we're moving on. We're running out of time and I'll leave the room open uh, for Runama if she wants to talk to the subgroups and start, you know, doing things for the presentation. Um, I'm just, why don't I have an edit button? There it is. Um, so we're going to move on with Nyan. Hi, I'm just uh, lurking here. I'm from the Aries D6 team. I just wanted to see what documentation team does. Awesome. Um, we're um, just to, to cover it. We are working on getting standards in these areas for the community. So um, the Hyperledger community is getting a rebranding soon, and we want to make sure that all of these things and all the community members, such as the Aries group, have access to everything Hyperledger has to offer. So thank you for coming. And again, uh, we appreciate you're here and Agnes will be um, in touch with you. Yes, so, great. thank you. Um, and then last but not least, Victoria, I'm gonna start at the bottom next week. <laughs> <laughs> Hello everyone, so nice to meet you all again. Okay, so I um, chatted up um, Nico, not directly, but I chatted on the Firefly um, Discord server of if they need any documentation, right? Assistance, and it just allows you access to do. So Nico, um, he he responded so fast. I was shocked. I was so surprised. Oh, he is awesome. <laughs> yeah, so we scheduled a meeting for today, but um, he had to reschedule to tomorrow. So I'll be in touch. So, But I'm interested in the user guides. So, yeah. Awesome, awesome. Thank you so much. Um, and let me just write this. Okay. Um, so again, we have time for our next deliverable, which isn't for at least two weeks. Um, I'm gonna leave the room open and I'm going to leave um, because I have to be somewhere. Um, and if you wanna start working on the presentation um, for the, TOC, it will help you get organized as to figuring out what each of these sections deliverables are. So does anybody have any more questions for me before I head out? No? Okay, I'm going to turn the meeting over to Runama and thank you everyone for all your hard work. Um, I can't tell you how much I appreciate it um, and have a great day. Sure. Thank you so much, Bobby. Thank you, Bobby. Okay, so I think uh, Bobby ma'am has left the meeting. So for all of you all, thank you so much for joining. And uh, I think most of you all are joining uh, the project calls currently and also getting to know that what are the documentation requirements. So as uh, you know, Tripur has done an amazing job. So if any of you find any, you know, shortcomings or any gaps that they are facing the documentation, make sure to note it down in the wiki page because um, yeah, sure, you can stick around, no problem. So, because we often listen things and then we forget that what was the gap. So, make sure that you note everything down on the wiki page. And in that way, we all can know that what, what are the calls that you all are joining. Also, I think all of you are managing college or school and with that, you are doing all these things. So, a big clap for that. I know it gets very difficult and hectic, especially during the exam time. So if any of you face any problems that you have your exams going on, you have too much pressure from college, feel free to let me know. Also, as uh, Tripur has also listed down a lot of tasks. So if you need help with any of the tasks, also let me know. Like I'm, I'm more than happy to help all of you. So okay. that's from Thank my you. side. Yeah. And Akanksha, I hope all your questions were answered today. I am much more clear now. Uh, I guess I would expect Windows to be there in the meet today because he said one of them told, but he wasn't there. But I'll ask him again. But at least I will talk with one of my mentors. That's a good thing. He has even created a Discord channel for you know onboarding one. So um, okay. I'm in a better place now. Okay, so that's great. I think one thing that you can do for now is that, you know, in your wiki page, you can list down whatever you are do doing, like joining the calls. You give uh, a great presentation the last week, so you can note that down as well. So whatever you are doing, you can just keep a track of that. Okay, the wiki page that we created with our names, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah with our names where, where we are just noting out whatever we are doing. Cool. 
so i think you can just do that for now because uh, then the mentors will tell you what you have to do for a specific yeah. project yeah. okay i'll do yeah yeah that's not compulsory but in case you know someone asks it what you have been doing for the past few weeks you can just say a few lines on that so yeah so uh, if uh, so if, the, if any of you have any questions feel free to ask me on either on linkedin or you can you know send me uh, through my email and if uh, any of you if any of you don't have any questions then maybe we can end the meet report do you want to yeah. ask anything yeah actually i was not present in the last meeting so i don't know about the subsection and what are like uh, bobby has mentioned about uh, about subsection and like sub leads i don't know what uh, she was talking about can you brief me on that part yeah sure so we are working on we are, as a part of the documentation task force each project has some documentation uh, gaps that they need to fill up right every project has and making documentation is an ongoing project process so we have mainly divided the task into five parts one is best practices one is github another one is templates another one is onboarding another one is user guides so these are the five areas of documentation that we will be working on so uh, the areas that you mentioned in the meeting were more related to the user guides part so that's why you know bobby ma'am wrote user guides uh, there so if you are interested in uh, in being a chair of so the chair is the person who will lead the lead everyone in that group so for the best practices subgroup there will be one chair for the github subgroup there will be one chair for the template subgroup there will be one chair for the onboarding i think akanksha is already selected as a lfx mentee she will be leading that and for the user guides we will be having one chair so each of the chair will be managing all the activities for that particular documentation group does that make clear yeah and how do we get into the uh, like uh, who will be selected as the uh, like a chair how will we decide so that so for now we have not uh, made any concrete decision on how we we'll, how we will be selecting just that you know whoever is interested is uh, letting us know in the meets that they are interested in being a chair for this committee and that committee maybe in the next meet uh, meet i have to ask that can there be two chairs or there should be only one chair so yeah depending on that uh, we will be assigning for now just you know whoever is interested in contributing to a particular group or being a chair of any group is just letting us know and starting to find out let let like let's say if you are interested in you know leading the user guides group so maybe you know for now you can uh, find out what are the documentation gaps in uh, user in the user guides in the project which you have already done so that's what is going on for now we have not selected the chairs yet i hope that answers your question yeah and do count me yeah. in for the chair name and yeah, i yeah, will sure love to will. be part of it yeah yeah sure sure also i think like there are some uh, you know category in which chair is not selected yet right or not like in some of the categories or the chairs are sub chairs are selected for all of the five categories i cannot understand what you are saying i mean you... like um Uh, are the sub chairs selected for all the categories on boarding it how templates and all no sub chairs are not selected for any other category since you are already selected as an lfx mentee for the onboarding so and you are interested no. in in here also so you can lead uh, lead that part no no i'm not talking about my stuff like tripur wanted to you know volunteer so i'm just uh, telling oh okay 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 yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, she can uh, volunteer for any of the roles if she wants yeah 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 we will consider you for the user guides so let's see in the next uh, next meet uh, like let's see who who are interested let's us know and maybe then you know we can have tripur for the user guides if she is interested in that yeah i'm totally in okay okay sure uh any more questions now nah, that's all from my side thank you okay no problem if any of you have any questions you can you know text me anytime on linkedin i keep on checking the messages so yeah that's it from my side have a great day everyone bye 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 guys bye you do bye. have a great week bye bye